Hello, my name is Florian Holm. I'm here to tell you about a little book which enables me to be here and speak with you. Because I have a bullet lodged in my back from an assassination attempt. This is Florian Holm. He's a millionaire playboy hedge fund manager turned fugitive. In the early 2000s, investigators caught on to his penny stock pump and dump scheme, and he was put on the FBI's most wanted list. Along the way, he started his own hedge fund, invested in a brothel, and even saved a football club from bankruptcy. At the pinnacle of his success, he had a net worth of $700 million. Then, in 2007, he vanished without a trace. He stuffed $500,000 in his underwear, briefcase, and cigar box, boarded one of his private jets, and disappeared from the world stage. This is the story of how a millionaire playboy hedge fund manager escaped the FBI. Florian was born on October 7, 1959, in a small town near Frankfurt, Germany. Florian came from an affluent family and had a good upbringing. His father owned a successful pipe welding and bathroom fittings installation business, but Florian didn't want to take on his father's business. He instead wanted to follow in the footsteps of his great uncle, Joseph Neckermann. His uncle was a German mail order tycoon and equestrian. Joseph represented Germany in the Olympics from 1960 to 1972. And on top of all that, Joseph started Germany's largest mail order business at the time and employed around 30,000 employees. His great uncle Joseph hosted family gatherings at his mansion every Sunday. These visits inspired Florian and gave him the motivation to become rich and successful. Florian was sent to the US. He performed well in high school and was accepted into Harvard University. He even represented the Harvard basketball team. In 1987, Florian graduated from Harvard Business School with an MBA and got a job at the prestigious Merrill Lynch. He worked at Merrill Lynch for a couple of years, but he eventually switched over to Fidelity Investments, where he got the opportunity to work under and be personally trained by Peter Lynch, a mutual fund legend. After working with Peter Lynch, Florian moved back to Germany, where he would become a senior vice president at Julius Bar. But Florian had bigger ambitions, and in 1993, he decided to start his first company, Value Management and Research, based in Frankfurt, Germany. His company went public in 1998. Within a couple of years, the company's value had risen sevenfold, while the dot-com bubble was getting inflated. He drew a lot of attention due to his charm, brashness, and glamour. He also had a very unique investment philosophy. Florian invested in internet and technology hype stocks, and thanks to the dot-com bubble, these stocks would skyrocket. He became known for these investments, and his stocks were often referred to as HOM stocks. After he made a fortune from the dot-com bubble, he began to spend his newfound fortune. In 2004, he saved the German football club Borussia Dortmund from bankruptcy. The club was struggling financially and suffered from poor management. Florian invested $20 million and helped overthrow the old management. He was hailed as a hero by many of the fans. In 2005, he co-founded Absolute Capital Management, which was listed on the alternative investment market of the London Stock Exchange. Given his popularity, charm, and investment strategy, investors flooded in. One of his most infamous investments was a brothel in Berlin called Artemis. By 2007, ACM was managing $3 billion, and Florian's personal fortune was an estimated $700 million. But his success in the stock market attracted some unwanted attention. In 2006, Florian was traveling through the streets of Caracas, Venezuela. He got stopped by a group of armed men. The armed men demanded everything Florian had on him. Florian handed over his phone and wallet, but he didn't want to let go of his watch. When Florian tried negotiating to keep his watch, the armored men started shooting. Florian was shot in his chest and ended up losing most of his left lung and spleen. Florian suspects that it was an assassination attempt. After the experience, Florian got a bit of a wake-up call and he began to reevaluate his life choices. At the time, he had already built up a fortune, but spent most of his time at work. 
so he had all the money in the world, but no time to spend it. So, in September of 2007, Florian announced that he would be selling his stake in ACM and retiring. He abruptly announced his resignation as the head of ACM and disappeared. The move wasn't well received. ACM stock lost 93% of its value up until June 2008. After the sale, Florian fled the country and spread his money across 120 bank accounts located on four different continents. On a flight from Spain to Italy, he had $500,000 stashed in his underwear, briefcase, and cigar box. Florian had just gotten away with one of the biggest frauds in US history. Despite all the positive press ACM was receiving, the entire fund was basically a scam. Florian was operating a pump and dump scheme, and Securities and Exchange Commission was catching on. The first form of fraud Florian was running was the classic penny stock pump and dump. Between 2004 and 2006, Florian had been using his massive cash reserves to buy up cheap penny stocks and sold them to uneducated investors. Besides the penny stock scheme, he also had a clever way of making more money on the side. Florian had set up a secondary company that was responsible for executing trades for ACM and his company charged insanely high fees. So not only was he making money from the penny stock pump and dump scheme, but he was making money executing trades for the scheme. Florian and his partners would regularly trade stocks amongst themselves to inflate the daily volume of these trades and make it seem like hot stocks, driving up the stock price and selling at a profit. ACM saw great performance during a relatively stagnant period following the dot-com crash. The SEC eventually caught on to the scheme. In March 2013, the FBI filed criminal charges against Florian. The FBI, the SEC, and the DEA put him on the most wanted list. Florian's freedom was short-lived. He was arrested in Florence, Italy. Just two days after the FBI filed criminal charges, the Italian police had been tipped off by the FBI and they were able to locate him for the arrest. After his arrest, his lawyers argued that Florian suffered from multiple sclerosis and that he couldn't be incarcerated due to health concerns. But doctors testified that his condition didn't prevent incarceration. The court sided with the FBI and agreed to extradite Florian, which meant he was facing up to 225 years in prison. But Florian thought up a clever plan. In Italy, once extradition becomes final, the prisoner must be extradited within 45 days or they're released from prison. Florian stalled long enough and on June 23, 2014, he was released from prison. As soon as he was released, he fled to Germany. Florian is still on the FBI's most wanted list. And since the German courts don't have any arrest warrants against Florian, Florian can live as a free man as long as he stays in Germany. Nowadays, Florian is a changed man. He said his year in Italian prison completely changed his outlook on life. He's quite transparent about his immoral and unethical activities at ACM, but he still believes he didn't break any laws. Florian has become a strong Christian and spends most of his time sharing his knowledge and donating his money. He published a book called Rogue Financier and he donated 100% of the profits to charity. He also co-founded a charity called Our Lady's Message of Mercy to the World Foundation, which focuses on strengthening Christian values and supports children with disabilities. He even started his own YouTube channel where he discusses his thoughts on the world, the economy, and the stock market on a regular basis. There's a lesson in every story. What can we learn from Florian's insane journey? Now, of course, there's no denying that the penny stock pump and dump scheme he ran was immoral and unethical. He swindled investors out of millions of dollars and was charged with fraud. But he was smart enough to realize that the ship was sinking. While most people get too caught up in success, he was cautious enough to spot the red flags and escaped with the money. This draws parallels to the many of the crypto pump and dump schemes where investors get rug pulled and are just left bag holding. With investments, investors should always be on the lookout for any red flags or suspicious activities. 
Some people argue that Florian should be extradited to the US and jailed for his crimes, while others argue that Florian is a changed man and is actually doing some good for society and making a positive impact. What do you guys think? Should he be jailed for his crimes or should he maintain his innocence and freedom? The comment section in this one will be very interesting. Thanks for staying till the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. Also, be sure to check out our other videos on this channel. Links are in the description and we'll see you in the next one.